Join it if you want and hit that share button. Hit that share button. Good morning everyone, hit that share button this morning, hit that share button this morning, hit that share button. <laughs> that share button thank you for joining us this morning thank you for coming on and giving God your first fruit this morning praising him early in the morning hit that share button <laughs> hit that share button Hit that share button. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Type in what you're declaring this morning. It is January 5th, family. January 5th. Hmm. Yes, it is. So I wonder does this is mean like January is going to fly too. Like right. to me, 2020 was over. I mean, we were just shouting. Right. Exactly. And then it was over. Yes, that's so Before true. Before you knew it, it was March. Mm hmm And then you looked up and you were going into May. And Kathy's trying to log, log on the YouTube. Uh, okay. <laughs> is it? Is it everything is okay with it? Is everybody logged on well? No, she hasn't been able to log on. She hasn't been able to come on YouTube, is it? Okay. Um, but it's 6 on 5. Yes, now. family. So we're going to go ahead and jump in so that. Good morning. We, we keep trying to make 7. It's going to happen one yes, day. Yes, it is. <laughs> we, we, we go, we, listen, the word is coming. We're Jennifer is on. Good morning, Jennifer. Jennifer. Phyllis is we're on. We're going to do an hour one day. It's, we're going to do an hour one day. <laughs> Let's just try. Yes. Okay. Can you hear now? Yes. Oh, no, but somebody couldn't hear? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Can everybody hear? Let's see. Because we're going to jump right let's in. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. I think we're, I think we're good. Um, wait. You know what? Hit, look and see if your, your thing is flashing. Okay. 
Your, um, is it flashing? Mm -hmm. Okay, turn it up. That's good. Yep. Good. All right. Can y'all hear now? Everybody can hear. I like everybody to have a chance to come in because you know I'm going to say those first two or three sentences that really um, are the whole message. So I like to give everybody a chance. This is the first Tuesday of 2021. Yes. This is the first Tuesday. This is the first week. I kind of celebrate like the whole... <laughs> <laughs> the whole first seven days yes. of the new year. Every day I'm like, this is the first Monday. This is the first Wednesday. This is the first This is the first Friday. So this is the first Tuesday of a new year. Welcome, Welcome. to a new year. And that's the exact word I want to use today. Hmm. The, the word I want to use today is new. All right. Can y'all type that in? First, the first thing. <laughs> new. new. That's the first thing I want to say is new, that this year is not like every other year. This place we are in is not like every other place. It's, 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 it's not like 2020. And last year I started talking about, and it wasn't because the numbers were going down, but I started talking about revival. Mm -hmm. And I still believe it, but y'all, where he's putting the faithful revival is in your spirit. It's not per se in your mind. And so our minds are being transformed so that we can walk out this renewal. But it's for you. It's for me. And I feel that it's already beginning to take place. We are absolutely not supposed by now. We are not supposed to be the same. And I want to dig this morning into the principle of having the faith to change. Because I've been in a posture of self-examination. Mm -hmm. I do it actually um, every time we get to another communion. Because the word says do it. The word says that we are to examine ourselves before we come to the table. Mm -hmm. So that we don't eat and drink uh, damnation to ourselves by eating and drinking unworthily that does not mean oh if you sin you can't take communion it means that you can't just come any old kind of way to the communion table and just eat and drink no repentance no change of heart no change of mind uh, you just do it religiously because it's first Sunday or fourth Sunday or it's six o'clock communion service. Whenever your church has it corporately, um, I'll have communion by myself at home. I'll, I'll take my own crackers, my own cup, and I'll say this week, you know, when I fast, the first day I'm going to have communion and the last day I'm going to have communion. The Bible doesn't tell you how often to do it. Mm -hmm. It just says when you do it. This is the way we do it. And one thing about God is that his word always lets us know how to do the things that he wants us to do. That is why there are so many things that I don't participate in or celebrate the way other people celebrate. Or there's so many things that I don't follow that have become fashionable or trendy in church or in God because it's not actually biblical. And my fear is that we are as religious as those we criticized mm -hmm. that came before us because they wore their dresses to the floor and they wouldn't go out the house uh, without their hats. And those who don't believe in lipstick, and we see I believe in mine, mm -hmm. but um, there were some things that they built and it was religious. And we can see their religion, and we don't want to be like that. But I am fearful that our generation is just as religious. We have now built new religions. What is religion? Religion is just the ways of man versus the ways of God. So the ways of God, we understand and know through Scripture and through the Spirit of God. And the ways of man, it's like a mixture. It's, and sometimes, just like our parents and our grandparents, the intentions are good. We're trying to live holy. We're trying to live right. And so a lot of the, 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 the customs and the traditions they put in place, the intention was good. It just was not per se of God. But it was passed down and it was taught as if it was God. Well, we're doing the same things. 
we're creating our own way of doing things and we're calling it God. Oh, this is new. This is new. You know, we got the world leading our praise and worship. We got the world coming in the church, doing our concerts so that we can attract numbers. And we're doing this in the name of Jesus, but I have absolutely no Bible for it. I have no Bible for it. And so now we are building we are building new customs. We are building new tr new traditions. And I know I'm saying things that some of you have probably never heard. Because these are things that our parents did not do. These are things that are new to our traditions. And I don't want to have a spirit of um, correcting anybody's pastor or correcting anybody's um uh, correcting anybody's house but these are the things that I see going on now amongst us who criticize religion and I'm starting to see wait a minute hold up we are still doing things hold up that are not necessarily biblical and they are new but we better be careful we better be careful about doing anything that's not biblical. I say all the time that I see amongst Christians that we don't necessarily know why we believe what we believe. And that is why we accept almost anything. That's why we'll do so many things that we don't know why we do it. But we do it because it is a custom. And we are doing it because it's a tradition, but we don't know why we do it. It's just like that day I was saying that, you know, if somebody says, what's your sign? We'll say, oh, I'm a Virgo. We don't even know what that means. I'm a Sagittarius. We don't even know what we're saying. We don't know why we do what we do. And when we know better, we do better. I used to, I didn't know either. But when I got away from home and I got by myself away from the traditions of mom and dad, away from the religion that I was raised in, the mixture of the ways of man and the word of God. When I got away and I was forced to study because I was in a microcosm of different kind of extremely intelligent people. And a lot of those people, they knew why they believed what they believed. Mm -hmm. they, they, they knew what the Quran said. And the Christians, we would just be, my grandmother... We didn't know why we believe we believe. And I and I had to learn why I believed what I believed. And I found out that so much of what I believed was something that I needed to let go of. So that's why I'm talking about faith to change. Because so many of us want new. So many of us want new. But I'm telling you, in order to do that, we have got to change. And I, I was worn out on Sunday when I got to communion service online because that's the direction in which Bishop's message went. And I said, oh, my God, I just asked God about this this morning. And that's been happening to me lately that as soon as I ask, I get an answer. And I had just asked God just in my mind. I had said, I wonder why. Listen, good. I wonder why so many people walk so long. Mm -hmm. And they never see the manifestation. Wow. I wonder why people hope and labor so long. And it's, it's like those who traveled in the wilderness. They never make it in. I, I wonder why it, it, it is that people grow old even in God. And they have not experienced any real victories. Any, any, any real any 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 real um they have not gotten to their mountain they're 80 years old and their life looks like it did when they were 50 and i asked god i said i wonder i wonder if it's because everybody doesn't change mm -hmm. and then when i got to service bishop started talking about even at his age in his late 60s having the strength to change but what's been on my mind is having the faith to change because remember that those who travel in the wilderness for 40 years did not have the faith to change the Bible tells you in Hebrews 3 that everything they heard everything they experienced under the tutelage of, of Moses it was never mixed with faith and because it was never mixed with faith, they never changed. Remember, only two people went in. Joshua went in. Moses died. 
and Caleb went in and everybody else was allowed to die in the wilderness and God would not let his promise die so he took a whole another generation in and we hate to criticize our parents but most of us as awesome as our moms and dads are they did not go in they wandered. They did not get their mountain. They did not walk in the promise and, and the fulfillment and the manifestation. And now it's our turn. And I've gotten to a place. I, I told Jackie, uh, Kathy, and I, and I told Terrence on Sunday. I've gotten to a place, y'all, where I don't want to labor and labor over things mm -hmm. without manifestation. And that's why every week we're on here decreeing, decreeing and declaring. But we're decreeing and declaring because we've already sought God. We've already prayed. We've already been in his word. We've already got direction. We've all, we're changing. We're being obedient. And it's like, wait a minute. I don't have to keep begging. Once I have done what God has required of me, now I can speak. Now all I have to do is, is, is decree a thing and watch God cause those words to come to pass because I'm in line with what he's saying. But that authority only belongs to those who change. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to look as much like the world as we do. We are supposed to be conformed to the image of Christ, every last one of us. Our destiny. What's my destiny? I got to reach my destiny. God's calling me to my destiny. Your destiny is to be conformed to the image of Christ. Because the Bible tells us in Romans that we were all predestined to something. What were we predestined to? We were predestined to change. We were predestined to look like him. To walk like him. To talk like That is the first part. A fulfilling destiny is to change. And as I look around me through the years, I see so many people that never made the turn. Mm -hmm. So many people that have refused to change. And I'm telling you all today, I don't care if it's big mama. I don't care if they're in your family. I don't care if, if, if they're in the choir. I don't care if they're in the pulpit. Over time, you're going to see the fruit of refusing to change. Mm. And the fruit of refusing to change is not always damnation. Sometimes it's just that you stay where you are, saints, and you start to dwindle. You stay where you are, and then you look up, and you're 65, and your promises are unfulfilled, and you don't feel like you're getting closer. Can You feel like you're drifting instead, or, or you, you look at your life, and now you're 78, and you've lived your life, and you've raised your children, but you are yet unsatisfied, mm -hmm. yet unfulfilled, and you start looking and seeing where... Did I drop the ball? Where, where did I miss my purpose in life? And fulfilling our purpose is more important than anything else that God could give us this morning. And God is showing me something. And some of you need to hear this because your foot almost slipped last year and the year before that. Because you were looking around you at people that refuse to change. You are looking at people that won't say good morning. You are looking at people who won't tithe, won't give, won't serve, won't nothing. You are looking at people who have nasty attitudes and you have been in a quandary because it seems like they get everything that they ask for. It seems like though their behavior is bad, their lives are blessed. And it will almost make your foot slip because it will make you doubt God. It will make you question God about the timing on your life. How is it that I am required to change? And those who can remain the way they always were can still be blessed. And the Bible told, the, the word of God came through Asaph in, in Psalm 73. He said, my foot almost slipped when I looked at the ways of the wicked. He said that he was envious that the proud and the arrogant could go on and on and on. But then he said he got in the presence of God, y'all, and he looked again and he saw that their road was slippery. Mm. 
Mm. And that in the end, there was a heel that they were going to slide straight down. The message Bible says that it would be like a, a dream. It would be like when somebody wakens from a nightmare and, and, and realizes that the life they thought they had wasn't even real. Mm. That there was going to come a day where they were going to have to face God. Concerning their behavior, be concerning their words. So this morning, I'm telling you, God is not mocked. Mm. And if you are sowing all the right things, you're going to reap all the right things. But if you are sowing to your flesh, and you are sowing disobedience, if you are sowing rebellion and spiritual laziness, all that can come of that is nothing. In the end, all that can come of that is the unfulfillment of your promise. Mm. And I so believe this morning it's time for newness. Mm. But that principle has been on my mind all weekend. How is it that some people make it in and some people don't? I, I told Jackie, I said, I heard a message mm. from Joyce Meyer, to be quite frank with you. And it's an old message. But she was talking about why she preaches what she preaches. Mm. And she says that so many people get saved and they never leave the wilderness. Mm. So many people are just living a saved life. But they, they actually never lived a life where they have been delivered into their promises. They live in a saved, broke life. They are, they are living for God, but they are constantly suffering. They never see the end of it. And she said, that's why I get up and teach everybody, teach the world every morning how to access their best life. Your best life. I am teaching people how to live in God. Not how to just exist being saved. I'm trying to get you. To see that God has a whole, whole new and better life for you. And Claudia is trying to get you to see you cannot go the way you are. You are required to change. And I'm telling you something that God is saying to me now. And I know that in years from now I'm going to understand what he's saying. Is that I'm going to be able to tell the difference between those who changed and those who didn't. And that people may be able to fake it now. But over time, some of these people that you see, saints, they're up. But you're going to see their fall. Mm -hmm. Because God, his word will not be mocked. I mean, we see that happening right now in the political world. Mm -hmm. with, with, somebody, uh, with, with, with somebody that doesn't even profess to, to be holy before God. Is that for so long, it can seem like you're getting away with stupid. Right. Until one day your day comes. Mm -hmm. And so this morning I am begging you to have the, the faith to change. Yeah. To, to learn how to change. To refuse to be the same the year, year after year after year. And I was saying on Sunday, I refuse for my circumstances not to change. And I'm trying so hard to change. Yeah. I'm doing everything that he asked me to do the way I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and there's something that the Bible tells us. He tells us, as soon as you hear the voice of God, turn then. Mm -hmm. He says, when you hear God, that's your today. Wow. As soon as you hear the message, the Bible says, do not do not let your heart be hardened like Israel. Israel heard Moses every day, but the Bible says something about that generation and why they never made it in. Every time they heard something they didn't like, they bristled up. Mm. They got stubborn. Every time they, they got correction, they, they got hard and, and they wouldn't listen. Every time somebody didn't stroke their ego, they got hard. And they wouldn't listen. Every time they heard something they never heard before. Because remember, they were Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are in the process we are in. It is because we don't know how to live in a new place yet. We are still learning. These people were Egyptians. And God told Moses, I cannot take them the short way. I have got to take them the long way. Because they got to learn how to occupy their blessing. These people are still Pharaoh's people. 
You have to remember they have been in bondage for 450 years. Who does that sound like? They didn't know how to live debt free. They didn't they didn't know how to live in a land that watered itself. Mm. They didn't know how to live in houses that they didn't struggle to get. And all God wanted was their faithfulness and their commitment. They didn't know how to be committed to God. I'm gonna tell you why. Now there's a very simple reason. Remember, the gods of Egypt were gods you could see. Mm. Remember the images of gold and bronze. They, they were always making a picture of God that they could bow down to, that they could light incense to. Remember, everything had an image. And that is why when God gave them the law, he asked them not to create images of him. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they did. They built a golden calf. Oh, no, we're worshiping God. And that's why y'all always hear me say, and I mean it, and I'm not biting my tongue, that anything and everything in the name of Jesus does not go. He slew an entire generation because they wanted to worship any kind of way. And I keep telling you, you do understand. You understand what I'm saying. Because some of you, you're not married, but you want to be married. And those of you who are in a marriage covenant, there is, there is nothing that your mate can bring you from their first marriage mm -hmm. that you will accept just because their first marriage, uh, it worked in their first marriage. There's not one of you that if your mate came to you tonight and say, well, you know, my first husband, I mean, he, he really liked it when I tickled his feet, so we're going to try it. Mm -hmm. Your husband, your, your wife is going to look like, look at you like you, you got the crack pipe. Did you just mention somebody else's name in my room? Are you crazy? But that is how we do God. We bring our old self and our old gods into our covenant with him and say, I'm going to do it this way. And it does not work. Worship must be spirit and truth. And it must be the way that he prescribed. We cannot do anything and everything in the presence of God and call it worship. Mm. Come on. Come on. Remember that anybody can praise. Everybody can't worship. You got to worship out of your relationship. Worship is intimacy. Worship is actually not you. The worship is him coming out of you and he spent 40 years teaching the people how to treat him Come on. maybe that's why the divorce rate is so high you spend 20 years trying to hope somebody learns to love you you spend seven years, 12 years trying to hope somebody listens to what you're saying and they never get it and so you let the marriage go. You let the covenant go because you realize you're with somebody who won't change. And that's exactly what God did. Mm -hmm. He realized these people are not going to change. Mm -hmm. And he allowed them to walk until they died. And he took their children in. Mm -hmm. And he gave their children the promises that he prompt that he first instructed the parents on and so i'm telling you this morning we have got to be changing there is no way he's going to put new wine into old vessels we gotta have a whole new mindset so this morning i have been saying to god god i have faith to change i believe that I can change. I won't let unbelief make me believe that I can't change. Make me believe that I have to always be this way. I believe that I have to change. I will change. And I've gotten to a point, and I always ask my kids this. I say, are you, are you um, a fast learner? Are you a slow learner? When it, when it comes to doing right and wrong. Are you a fast learner or a slow learner? And I tell them, because listen, I've gotten to the point that I'm tagged. And any teacher on here, you know what I'm talking about when I say tag. That's a talented and gifted program right. in the public schools. And those are for the most accelerated learners. I tell my kids, you better be tag. You better get to the point that you correct yourself so quickly mm. until nobody has to correct you. Nobody has to beat you up with the word. I ask them, are you a fast learner <laughs> or are you a slow learner? 
Don't be spared. Spared is special ed. Don't be special ed. Don't have special needs in God. And I'm asking you, are you a fast learner? Are you a slow learner or are you tagged? Or are you determined to be special ed? Yeah, are, are, are you determined tag. to need tutors? Or are you in, determined to need four or five people to stand over you for you to do the will of God? Do Are you determined that, that you can't pray on your own? You need eight prayer partners. And are you going to be slow to learn? Are you going to be quick? Because I've gotten to a place where I am tag. Come on. I have gotten to a place where as soon as I hear, I'm like, up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I do feel that old stuff coming back. Let me go on a fact. I've gotten to a point that as soon as God say, I don't like that, I'm like, drop it. Mm. It used to take me a minute. I used to have to think about it. I used to have to muster up my strength. <laughs> Mm. I used to have to get the confidence to obey. I'm trying to tell you, I'm tagged now. Come on. As soon as I hear a word, and it's one of the reasons I appreciate the leader that I have, it is because he is raw. Mm -hmm. And I realize, um, Jerry and Kathy, I realize something about him, and it's that he's not for everybody. He's not everybody's cup of tea because you got to really want to move fast to be under his teaching because the meat is so strong and he's one of those spiritual fathers that will not pacify you or hand you excuses. Mm. And so he's very hard to listen to over time because you'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I won't go change that yet. Wait a minute. <laughs> I was going to leave that where it was one more year. And he will be constantly pushing you up higher. But it's the reason I appreciate him. It is because I understand that he's trying to accelerate us in God. Mm. So that I can be where I am at 40. That he may not have reached until 60. Mm. Or I, I could be where I am at 25. And he might not have gotten there till 35. Yeah. And so we have a choice. You can be tagged. Or you can be special ed. You can be a fast learner, y'all. Or you can be a slow learner. And you can go around this mountain one more time in 2021. Mm. But I decree and declare this year for me will not be a year of circles. Mm. Come on. Have you noticed that your life looks the same every year? Oh, Are you sick of that yet? I'm trying to tell you. I told Kathy on <laughs> Sunday. Kathy was telling me something private and I said, you know what? I got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I am sick of praying about this mm. and hoping that it will change. It's time to just decree a thing and let's watch God now. And some of us, we are laboring over the same prayers and the same issues with our children with our finance mm. and I came the first Tuesday for change I didn't I'm trying to tell y'all I am done with laboring I have lived the life of Hannah you know Hannah kept praying and praying and year after year nothing but she kept believing she kept trusting and year after year nothing and she was being provoked and teased and vexed anyway and year after year nothing and God watched her faithfulness mm. and he and, and he and he watched how she would never retaliate and a day came where 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 Hannah ends up bearing six children mm. she gives away one she presents one to the Lord and she has five more the day of manifestation has to come and I don't know about you but once you can feel saints yes. once you can feel that it's time let's just go with it let's just go let's stop begging this oh. year Goodness. let's stop pleading this year let's get the faith to change so that there's no reason for God not to bless us. or And sometimes your blessing is not a thing. Sometimes your blessing is spiritual acceleration. Mm -hmm. And so let's not give God any reason to leave us where we are. Let's run in the things of God. As soon as we're here, let's make the turn. When God says, check your attitude, let's do it. When God says, you need a fast day, let's do it. When God says, you've been watching TV too long, let, let, let's get up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll get to a point now where, you know, I'll, I'll be watching my shows. And I don't have a lot of time dedicated to watching my shows. But I'm like, dang, you want to take <laughs> over that? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not playing. I'll be trying to watch my shows, but I sense oh, 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 now. Mm. I know my people be like, what is she doing? <laughs> and I be like, Dad, well, I'm trying. You taking over this. I guess I can't. Let me go on up. <laughs> I guess it's a wrap. It's a I'm trying to cook my dinner, and, and prayer is taking over. I'm trying to drive and trying pray. To to the store. Trying to work, and prayer is taking over. Is this what we're doing? Mm. And you know what? Let it happen. Jesus. Let, let it happen because it means he's trying to build you up to something. Build you up for something. So let it happen. And I'm like, okay, God, this year I'm not going to ignore mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost. This year, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna make everything first in my life. Come but on, God, come on. We, we gotta find time for Him, but we have time for everything and everybody else. This year is gonna be the year we change. If you want to, come on. do whatever you want. I have already made up my mind that I will no longer be slow to change. Hmm. Because he is renewing us. And today I want to read something to you in Galatians 2.18. I don't know if you got the message. <laughs> oh, no, oh, hold on, hold on. And I actually am reading it in the NET Bible. And I'm reading that Bible because um, of how plainly it reads this. Galatians what? Galatians 2.18. And I know that some people do not, uh, the NET, I know some people don't <laughs> read the King, Version, King James Version because they don't understand it. And some people won't read the Bible because they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Some people run from their study time because they feel like the scripture is hard to understand. So it's like, I'm just not going to even... <laughs> Right. I'm just not going to read it. I'll turn on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But for those people, I encourage you to get a Bible you can understand. understand. Yes. And after you get a Bible you can understand, man, you're going to be reading all the time. You're you going to say, oh my goodness, I didn't know that this said. Woo! That thing is going to light up. Get a message Bible or ERV, the easy to read version. Okay. Um Get a NIT, which is the um, New International NIV. I mean the New International Version. Get the expanded, that or the amplified that breaks every word down for you, mm -hmm. so that you understand um, what the chapter or what the verse is saying. But today, the NET says this so simply, much simpler than the King James Version. So I'm going to read it in that version. But if I build up again. Those things I once destroyed, I demonstrate that I am one who breaks God's law. Mm. Just that simple. If I continue to rebuild what God told me to destroy, what I tore down in my life, and, and it's not always sin. Sometimes it's, it's, re, it's just religion. Mm -hmm. The ways of man versus what does, that's why y'all always hear me say, and, and dad's always mocking me. But I absolutely mean it. You always hear me say, what does the Bible say? <laughs> and, I, and I say that because, saints, it keeps you from the clutches of religion. Mm. That's why I always say, and I always, and our pastor says something. He says, read the text. Mm. And I have my own saying. I say, read your whole Bible. You can't just pick out one scripture and say, I got it. Read your whole Bible. What does the Bible say about the matter? And people will ask me my opinion all the time. Well, what do you think about such and such? And I will say, okay, well, let's see. What does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. I will say, okay, well, the scriptures say, what does the word of God say? So if I build up again, that's anything. Mm -hmm. If I go back to my ex after God told me to let it go. Mm. If, if if I start walking around with doing these again, <laughs> after I, I got after I, I got delivered from that, God showed me I ain't got to do that. Mm. If, if 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 I walk around and start putting on standard on others that God has only given to me, did you get your three? Did you get your three hours of praying today? Mm. Mm, you must. You must. God didn't tell them they had to do that. God told me I had to do that. Mm -hmm. If he didn't tell you you have to do that, then you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And so if I rebuild the things that God told me to destroy, mm 
whatever that is. If, if, if it's a bad attitude, if it's, if it's talking smart, if it's being stubborn, then I am the one who breaks God's law. So whenever I found myself trying to resurrect what God has destroyed in my life, or, or if I find myself going back to the things that I learned don't work, now I have become a breaker of the law because he has shown me better. He's given me revelation. He has given me the doorway to change. And if I rebuild what he is through with, mm doorway to change come on if he's given me the doorway to change and I rebuild what he is through with I am and so many of us are guilty of that and that's why you can't go any further than you are you're trying to figure out how to reconstruct your past and you cannot reconstruct your past I want to tell y'all something and we got to move into prayer but this frustrating place mm. that God has made you lay down in and you got to lay down because you cannot control it. You cannot manipulate it. All you can do is walk by faith now. This frustrating place that God has had us in, where we are not in control, is not per se to destroy us, y'all, but it's to destroy the things that we have built up in our life that really have nothing to do with who we are becoming. He has a destiny, a promised place for every last one of us. And so many of us, you have seen pictures of it. And the problem is we don't know how to get there, nor do we know the appointed time. But God knows. And you cannot manipulate it or dominate it. And your frustration becomes because you do not know the hour. You do not know the moment. You don't know the minute. You don't know when your suddenly is going to break. Mm -hmm. But God has caused us to be in this place, this place that has actually caused us much pain so that we can make the turn into becoming who he wants us to be and to becoming what we are purposed to be. And it's much bigger than any hope that you ever had or that your mama had for you right here. You can't be what your parents want you to be. That's too small. You got to be what God is shaping you. You got to be what God is molding you. And some of us, we were in danger of becoming a replica of someone else. So many of us were in danger of becoming what we are not. So many of us were in danger of becoming what we had built up in our own minds. And what happened in 2020 is he said, I don't want it. And he tore it down. What happened in 2019 and 2018 and 2017 and 2016, as you look over the last 7, 10, 12 years, God tore down what you were building because it is not your future. And it had nothing to do with your future. And so the place you are in, saints, it is not about yesterday. Yesterday is over. Do not rebuild it. Do not fight over it. Do not squabble over it. I told y'all last week, church is full of people who are warring over a sinking ship, who are, who are tussling over what God is through with. Oh, I can't speak to you lest you call me first lady. I can't speak to you lest you call me pastor. I can't speak to you lest you get yeah, you, you put, put, put a handle on it. Put respect on my name. We're fighting over things that don't even matter. We're warring for what doesn't even matter. Not even realizing that so many of those people that are fighting for what God has done with, he has already moved past them Come on. to you. He has already moved past them to new people, new leaders. I tell y'all every week, the priesthood has already changed. Come on. Koyan says, yesterday is over, do not rebuild it. And he is not rebuilding it. And some of you are trying to put your history back together. And you're calling that healing. And he's not going to participate in it. Speaks. It's, it's over. Yes. It, 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 it's gone. You got a whole new thing. Mm. Breaking in your life. Some of you. You got a whole new relationship. Mm. Coming into your life. You, 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 you 
you you should be expecting God. Son. Yes, God is God not rebuild. You praying over something. God's not rebuilding that. God's God's trying to give you the man of your dreams. God's trying to give you the woman of your dreams. Don't you want to wake up, single people, mm. next to somebody that you got to think about it. Mm. Do I want to pray or do I want to hug them? I don't know which one. <laughs> what do I want to do first? I don't know. I don't know. Don't you want to wake up to the mate of your dreams? Why you want to settle? Come on. You know, Nikki says something to me that to me is one of the greatest things. Mm. A wife could ever say, and I don't think she'll mind me repeating it, that she said that she knew that she had chosen the right person mm. and that she was with the right person because everything that she prayed for, he aligned with. Mm. And that her husband-to-be had the same testimony mm. that I'm with you because God showed me and I'm like, single people, isn't that all you need? Is to know that God showed you this is who you supposed to love. This is who you supposed to be with. But you are trying to rebuild something with somebody God is through with. Mm. That thing is over. Come on. And some of you all need to get yourself ready for the relationship of your dreams. Because what you had was a nightmare, and you're trying to fix it, and, and you can't fix it. Mm. You need to get unused to living in nightmares. Mm. And, and I and I actually, yes, you I listen. Hold up. Yeah, you got to get unused to living in unused. nightmares. I, We're I, too I, comfortable I, in the the dysfunction. I will not. Ooh, you did not say dysfunction. Come on. Dysfunction. That's dysfunction. exactly what I will not live in dysfunction Come in Jesus' name. In, Je in Jesus' name. Do I run across this? <laughs> Help now? yourself. In Jesus', in name, Jesus name. I'm telling y'all, if you don't believe it's time to change, okay, I'm going to leave it for us. I believe it for us. I am not going to be in dysfunction for 20 more years. And a lot of that, that has shaped us and it has made us strong. And it has helped us to see what God is delivering us from. But it is not what he is delivering us to. I am not going to live in dysfunction in Jesus. And there in are Jesus some name. who are tugging and fighting to keep dysfunction. Mm -mm. Well, that's my baby daddy. Well, that's my... That don't mean he your future. Come on. I'm trying to tell you, your future, if you can remember anything else, remember your future is not going to look anything like your past. And mm. that's why in increments, we are coming up higher and higher. In increments, we are changing more and more and more. Mm. We are transforming. You guys, you should be looking in the mirror and you should be transforming before your own eyes. Mm -hmm. So that we can be ready to live the new life. New, 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 new. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times and how many ways to say to you, new, new, new. I am not here to repair anything old. Mm -hmm. I'm here for new this morning. 2021, that thing should already be breaking open in so many of our lives. Mm -hmm. I wish you believed it. Come on. Father, we honor you this morning. God, we thank you for new. Thank you for new. God, we thank you for new. New, new. We will not be guilty of what Paul told us not to be guilty of. We will not be guilty of trying to rebuild what you said no to. We will not be guilty of trying to reconstruct our history and make it our destiny. We will not be guilty, oh God, of trying to make our past work in our future when you have already told us you threw with it and i thank you god that we don't have to live in our mistakes this morning god there is somebody who has been haunted by yesterday and i decree and declare to them that it is over i decree and declare to myself god i thank you for another chance this morning first of all there are so many people oh god laboring with it 
not able to believe you, but you have already given them another chance. This morning, you have already given us a fresh start in you. The past is gone. You have already forgiven us. And there are people here that have not yet forgiven themselves. So first and foremost, oh God, we repent. And we forgive ourselves. And we welcome you to wash us. We welcome you to change us. We welcome you to cleanse us. You are causing us to come up higher every week. You're causing us to learn more every week. But we have got to be willing. We understand that we have to be willing to let go of the ways of man. Because they will never bring us to an expected end. It will never bring us to a properly aligned place in you. It will never bring us to destiny. What's happening in our lives is supernatural. So we cannot dominate it. We cannot manipulate it. And we cannot make it happen. But God, I thank you that at the pointed time, we will reap more than we have sown. I thank you for what your word says, that we will reap in places where we did not sow. God, I thank you that this year will not be a year of lack for the saint. You will take care of us just like you have every year. I don't care what's going on. God, I thank you that you will shield us from super COVID. Jesus. God, and I know that the world is trying to rush this thing. And we want this thing to be over in a day. But death is still out here. Death is still taking a toll on the entire land. People are still losing their lives. And I say this morning, God, cover us in Jesus' name. Let healing, let healing take place. Let healing, God, overpower sickness in Jesus' name. I decree and declare we will not be sick. We are under the shelter of your blood covering today. Thank you for protection, God. That even a super virus can't take us out in Jesus' name. So many are in fear today of what's going to happen this year. But this morning, what we feel is your presence. What we feel is your power. What we feel, oh God, is a deep knowing that you will rescue us again and again. There is something taking the, in place in the earth. And God, we know that you are in charge. You are still in control. And there have been so many tragedies in the past year. So many losses. But oh God, we realize that you are still in control. You never left your throne. 2020 did not take you by surprise at all. And I thank you that neither does 2021, that you are God still over all of this. And Father, you are Lord, not just Savior. You are Lord over our lives this morning. Where is the Lamb? You are Lord over our entire lives. And Father, this morning, this first week, this first Tuesday of 2021, we give ourselves back to you. For we will not relive and live in dysfunction in Jesus' name. We will not live in confusion in Jesus' name. We will not live overpowered by our desires. We will not live in constant lack, God. This is not our year to be broke. God, we refuse it this morning. Just like we refuse to cough. Just like we refuse to be sick. We refuse to be sick with broke. We refuse to be behind on our bills. God, I don't care what miracle you got to do. But this business of the saints not even having seed to sow, cancel it in Jesus' name. 
you give seed to the sower. And I thank you, God, this morning that everybody who wants to give, everybody who wants to sow, everybody who wants to tithe in 2021 will have it. God, we accept the process. We're not afraid to, to learn, God. We're not afraid to mature. We're not afraid to go to school. We're not afraid to study and to show ourselves approved. We're not afraid to be approved by you. That's not the issue, God. We just don't want to feel like it's in vain anymore. We don't want to feel like we're laboring to no avail. Show up for your people this year. Show up for the faithful this year. Show up for the weak. Show up for those who just turned around. Show up for those who are trying. Show up, God, for those who are struggling. In Jesus' name. I thank you. You won't leave us hanging. Show up to rescue our children and our grandchildren. And Jesus, let, let this be the year of their salvation. So let this be the year. God, let this be the year that we are finally open to embracing new, new, new. No. And sometimes, God, you are making us new. You are making all things new. But you don't want it to look like the old. You tore down the old. So this morning, we have the strength to let the old go. It's not going to look like that. The way we were trying to have it, it's not going to look like that. You have something better in mind. Thank you, Jesus, that you have better. And we are no longer going to compete. God, we are no longer going to fight over what you threw with. Our eyes are looking forward today. We make up our mind, God, that all things are possible. In you, oh God. And the place that you have us in is not about our past. We need not weep about that anymore. The place you have us in is, in fact, about our future. You know what position you have for us. And I thank you that the storm couldn't keep us from it. You know the set place that you have for us. You know the business. You know the deals that we got to work. You know what's ahead of us. You know what our children, children have to become in the earth. You know, oh God. So we seek you for it. Can we say, God, this year, show us the way? We will follow. We already say yes. God, just show us the way. Glory to God. We want to go, God. We want to go. Show us the way. Show us the way. So we want to go. Show us the way. Show us how to make the turns. Show us how to change. Show us God. Show us God. Open up our eyes this week. Maybe we ignored our answers. Maybe we were distracted from our answers. Give us direction, God. Let us be your holy priesthood. Let us live for your glory now. Yeah, na na mo so mo mo ko ama. Yeah, na na mo so mo mo ko ama. Yeah, na na mo so mo mo ko ama. 
God, we know that you're not a sugar daddy. That you require something of us. And we got to be willing. We got to be willing to change. And yes, we are willing. We are still willing. Because we plan to go all the way with you. All the way in the blessing, all the way in the healing, all the way into purpose. Even if there is suffering, you will deliver us out of every single one. And Father, this year, sickness we will not tolerate. That's not our destiny. Can we rebuke it now in Jesus' name? Protect those that still have to be in these streets every day, in these hospitals in Jesus' name. Put a hedge around us. And God, heal the land. Do it because you're God. You are God alone. You're the only one. You're the only one we can go to. Somebody has run out of answers today. And I thank you that you're going to do a miracle in their life today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And we will not be used to dysfunction. We will not be used to waking up in a nightmare. I thank you now, God. I thank you that even now we step into the life we could only dream about. Full of purpose and power. The right relationships, God. The right connections, oh God. Not full of brokenness. Full of purpose. In Jesus' name, God, for the fulfillment, God. Fulfilled almost like God, we will wake up and realize that our real life is better than our fantasies, God. Because it's the life that you had planned for us all along. And we have finally learned the lessons. That have prepared us for this time. And I thank you that you will let it unfold. Unfold right before our very eyes. That 2021 will be new. 2021 is different. 2021 is a year of change. Can I thank you, God, for so many of us? It's time. It's time for change. And we want you to hear us say it. So that you will know that we believe you. It's time for change. Cause us to walk like it. And cause us God to keep our victory. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. What a message family. What a message, what a message. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. Ooh. Stella says, the year of change. Yes, Keisha says amen. Pamela says amen. Gwen says amen. Phyllis says amen. Willie says amen, amen. Jolinda says amen, amen. Hallelujah. Nikki says amen. Fella says, I receive it, y'all. Family type and I receive it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Brenda says, in Jesus' name, amen. Stella says, amen. Koyan says, amen, amen, amen. God is so good. He is so good. He is so good. Lisa in Florida says, amen. Jacqueline says, amen. Uh, Chandra says, amen. Jack, um, Ella says, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Type and I receive it, family. Yes. And I want to decree one more word yes. just over the airway. Yes. And I, I, I dare some of you to walk through the whole year like this. Yes. 
May, August, yes. November. I'm going to say one word, better. Type that in, family, better. Type it in, better. Better. Come on. Because, see, we're willing to be better, so better. Yes. Better. I don't care if things are getting worse for the world. I'm going to pray for them, but better. Yes. Better. Better. Yes, better. Cherry. In March, better. Yeah, my soul cool. Yeah, my Shanda. In July, better. In October, if it looks like it's going left, say better. Better. Yes. Better. Better. Family, we love y'all. See Lisa typing in. Jolinda, oh yes, everybody's typing in better. Better. Yeah. Natalie Koyan Better Ella says thank you Jesus Better Jolinda Better Stella Better Lisa Better Jerry Hallelujah Yes Come on Come on come Better on. Better 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 Family, we love you. Better. Better. And on that note, we gotta go out on some 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 praise, <laughs> some 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 shout music. We got the we got the soft music going on. Y'all better shout your way out of this one. Come on now. Better. Listen, you gotta help yourself. Come on. You gotta help yourself. Ain't better. Nobody, ain't nobody coming to get you out of it. No, better. You gotta help yourself. Family continue to to just be better. Continue to be better. And if you didn't start, start now. Being better. Come on. Better. We've been challenged. Better. Thank you guys for supporting Amplify Network. We love you. Continue to be better today. Helen says, I receive it. Thank you. Better. Love you guys.